Hey everyone, welcome back to some new r slash malicious compliance stories. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called Stop Working So Hard. I work in a corporate setting on a mixed team. The team is made up of a few different roles, each with its own reporting structure. I'm the only person reporting up to my manager on my team. I'm pretty much on my own for the day to day. For the first half of last year, I worked for a senior manager on a mixed team. Some people on the team were rock stars, others were not. I've always been a go-getter, perfectionist kind of person. So on that team I didn't let things slip through the cracks, which meant that often I did things beyond my specific role. Halfway through last year I moved to a new team and thus reported to Awesome Manager for the second half. Again, I'm the only one from my role on this new team. Cue the new year and with it performance reviews. This is the one time outside of promotions that you can get a raise. I've worked hard on the new team and everyone I worked with has shown appreciation. And this company actually did well last year, so funds are not a problem. The awesome manager is the one conducting my review and they asked the senior manager for feedback since I did report to him for the first half. Awesome manager says I'm doing an amazing job, keep it up, here are some suggestions. Even a senior vice president of the company loves showing off something I made. Senior managers now say do not pick up every piece, allow others to fail sometimes so they can grow and learn and better themselves. Then awesome manager informs me that the average waste percentage is 3%. Awesome manager tells me they recommended I get a 4% waste. They then tell me that all of the senior managers met for the whole organization to coordinate and coming out of that meeting I am getting 3%. The awesome manager cannot get a straight answer why my race was decreased. So since the senior manager was part of that meeting where they cut down my race, I'm following his direction, take on less. I've cut back to ok employee work ethic and I'm letting others fail and grow. Since I'm alone in my role for the team and awesome manager just got moved elsewhere, I have another new manager, no one can call me out. In the meantime I'm spending that extra energy prepping my resume for more reasons than just this. The last story is called A Fight of Pettiness. I'm the daughter of my normally very nice parents. We had new neighbors move in about two years ago and for the most part we've just left them be. They are a little annoying sometimes and there were a couple of instances where we had to complain about the overwhelming noise of their weekend parties at night. But other than that they are pretty okay neighbors. We've never had a problem with them until recently after several strikes against my family. Strike number one was the destructive dogs. So our neighbor's family and my family own dogs. My dogs are very gentle and spend most of their time indoors. We live in Southern California and when this incident happened it was in the middle of summer so we let our dogs stay inside to keep cool. Their dogs are very aggressive and are raised as outside dogs. Every time I let my dogs out in the backyard for some fresh air, my neighbor's dogs will attempt to break through the wooden fence dividing our properties via digging, climbing and scratching. The digging was easy to stop, we just filled in the holes with dirt. But at some point their dog managed to create a hole in the wall large enough for their dog to squeeze their face in, so about the size of a dinner plate. We have cameras, so we caught everything on tape. My parents are pretty understanding, so my dad went and talked to my neighbors offering to pay half of the damage since it's our shared property line. The neighbor's wife, who we are going to call Lying Sally for the story, called my dad a liar and accused our dogs of damaging the fence and demanded that my family pay for the damages. They fought over it and nothing got solved, so eventually my dad conceded and nailed some plywood over the gaping hole. Problem solved. But this was only the first strike. Strike 2, just why? The next incident is honestly really stupid and I don't even know why lying Sally bothered lying. So this incident happened about a few days after we had to call our third noise complaint on one of their parties again. Like seriously, who blast let it go at 10.30 pm at night? I wish I was making this up. My mom is getting out of her car in our driveway when lying Sally walks right up to her and accuses her of yelling at their lawn mowing guy to not mow their lawn so loudly at 7.30 am. My mom was very confused. She has never talked to the guy who comes over to mow their lawn. We've never cared about any of our neighborhood's business in general. 
We have a neighbor across the street who revs his motorcycle at 6 a.m. and another neighbor who does construction stuff in his garage for a hobby. My family has been living here for almost 20 years. We are very chill with our neighbor's loud and noisy hobbies normally. Long story short, my mom confronted the lawnmower guy one morning and asked him if she's ever talked to him before and he told her no. Lying Sally saw this and ran out of the house to confront my mom. She screams, why are you talking to him? And so my mom replies, because you are a liar. And so that's the gist of it. I don't know why Lying Sally even bothered lying about that. At this point we were convinced Lying Sally was a nutcase. Strike three, the point where I finally stepped in. For the past month my neighbors have stooped to a new low by hogging all of the parking spaces in front of our house whenever they get the opportunity. My family has three cars, two usually sit in our driveway and the third is parked curbside in front of our house. My neighbors have two cars, both of which they park alongside the curb in front of both of our houses. The curb our houses share is only big enough for two cars. They've stopped using their driveway entirely just to park their two cars on the curb which forces us to park our third car further down the street. It's not a big deal but what they were doing was petty so my parents became petty too. The moment they would move their cars to go to work my parents would move our third car back into its spot on our half of the curb. This went on for almost an entire year until at some point an unspoken truce was made and they stopped their petty scheme. Things returned back to normal until I accidentally messed it up. In my defense I was driving home with the third car late at night. It was dark and I accidentally back up way too far and parked the car smack dab in the middle of the curb. So my car is literally in the middle between our houses. I'm tired from rocking all day so I don't think much of it since our neighbor still has a whole entire driveway to themselves. The next morning I wake up to the sound of my parents arguing downstairs. Turns out our neighbors have parked one of their cars on their driveway and the other one is parked in front of our third car on our side of the curb. This wouldn't be a problem if half of the hood of their car wasn't sticking out into our driveway. The problem with this is that if we try to back out the car, the one closest to their car in our driveway, we might hit their car and I'm pretty sure that was the purpose. I was done with their games. So I marched over next door and rang the doorbell. The husband will call him pick for the story opens the door and he's recording me as if I'm going to attack him. Which is ridiculous, I'm 5'2 and he's close to 6 feet, if anything I should be the scared one. Is it okay if you can move your car? No, the police told me I can park anywhere I want because it's a public road and they even told me I can record you. I don't even care about you recording me, I just need you to move your car. You have an entire driveway to yourself. It's just common courtesy to not block your neighbor's car into their driveway. You guys can still get out, it's not that bad. Yeah, but we just don't want to hit your car by accident while backing out. Is that a threat? No, I'm just saying that we don't want to pay for the damage of your car because you didn't want to move it. And I can't guarantee that we won't hit it, it's pretty close. I don't care, I shouldn't have to move my car. You move your car. I realized I wasn't going to get anywhere so I let him slam the door in my face and I walked away. I went back inside my house and got on my laptop to make sure that yes it is indeed illegal to park in front of someone's driveway, even partially. So my neighbor does have to move, by law. However, I wanted to be petty so I moved my car. I grabbed my car keys and carefully backed up the car, again the one closest to his poorly parked car so that the back half is inches away from the front of Pig's car. So my car is now blocking Pig's car from pulling out into the street and leaving. My car is also blocking the sidewalk which I know is illegal but I already had this planned out. Basically I caged in his car and held it hostage for a couple of days. Either Pig or Lying Sally would have to come and apologize to make me move the car which I knew was very unlikely or… Part 4 Victory Sure enough as I predicted Pig called the cops a few days later and reported me. His face was so smug as the officer told me that I can't legally box in someone's car like that and block the sidewalk with my vehicle. I told the officer that I understood and that I will move my car. 
but I immediately pointed out that it's illegal to partially block the entrance point to someone's driveway as well and that Pig's car is crossing that line by over two feet. The smile on Pig's face vanishes and his face turns red while the officer tells him that he's going to have to move his car as well. So I back up my car and I'm grinning like a cat who's caught its spray while Pig has to move his car into his driveway. I also made sure to move our third car back into its rightful spot as well. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, comment and subscribe to the channel for more content. Let me know what you think about the video in the comment section below. Have a great day. Bye bye.